I have one thing to say. Police! <laughs> Police! Police! Hi guys! Hi guys! And welcome to the... N <laughs> Hey you guys, and welcome Welcomes. to a brand new episode of Spilling, Spilling the crime. crime! A true crime podcast with a glass of something that you like. <laughs> so what are we gonna talk today? So Jonas, mm. we are talking about another true crime story, of course. Oh, we are. Yes. But, but this time, we're gonna take it home. We're going to talk about something national. Yeah, something that you guys probably don't know about. Yes. Yeah, and this time also we are changing things up. Umberto decided to write a lot and I decided to step <laughs> back a little bit because I talk too much and I want to stop hearing my voice when I edit. Let's see if I can do this, guys. So He's eating a Dorito. Yes, okay. I can yeah. stop eating, sorry. Yeah. We are talking about a brutal crime, a Portuguese crime that happened in the Big Apple. So yeah, this is kind in of America, a, an international crime. Yeah, but the, but the victim and the the crazy dude. I don't want to say crazy, but they are both Portuguese. What were, 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 are, are, were, were, they are and they were. Let's proceed. <laughs> <laughs> and this crime, guys, has all the perfect juices. So we have fame, we have money, we have sex, and we have lots and lots and A lots of Of media! Oh yeah! <laughs> of media, Jonas. We have okay. lots of media. So grab your glass, if you can. If you are driving, please don't grab your glass. Yeah. And let's do this. Yeah! So much stamina, call to action, moments. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <I'll go faster. laughs> This is our jingles. <laughs> okay. <no. laughs> Before we start this episode, we want to ask you guys for a favor. If you are enjoying uh, this that podcast, I, I hope you are. Don't forget to follow us uh, here on Spotify. Rate us. Rate us on iTunes. Give us your opinion. Only five stars, please. And if you have any any case that you would like us to discuss, please send us a DM. Oh, and also, if you have any creepy crime story in your family, or, or if you oh know something, God. DM us, because we might do a special episode with you, with, with your, your stories. Story. Yeah, I think that would, that would be, be fun. really great. It's always good to check cases that we don't know. It's, yes. the, it's the case of this one. So enjoy the podcast and don't forget to rate us. <laughs> this episode is based on a Portuguese uh, writer, Joana Amaral Dias. She did a podcast episode about this case. Um, it's completely in Portuguese, so, so sorry guys, but she's amazing. She did an amazing job and the timeline is perfect, so we decided why not. Yeah, as so, a support. Here, uh, here we are talking about the crime of... Renato Siabra in Carlos Castro, also known as... What Renato... are you doing? <laughs> Don't do that. Renato... Behave. Renato... <laughs> Renato Siabra, also known as... Renato, it opens. Uh, and yeah. Carlos Castro. <laughs> he had to do this. Yes, I did. <laughs> We want to teach you guys Portuguese words. O ambiente de tortura e violência vivido na prisão, diz a família, pode colocar a vida do jovem que matou Carlos Castro em risco. So this crime uh, happens in the Big Apple. We already told you that, and we have two main uh, lead roles here. Yes, I want to uh, read exactly how Umberto wrote, because <laughs> for me it's it's amazing. So we have Carlos Castro, 65 year old homosexual, <laughs> and Renato Siabra, 21 years old, blank. I have to justify myself. Yes. So the first one, the, the old guy, <laughs> he is homosexual. I know. He yeah, was. Yeah. He was. It's not every day that I hear the word homosexual. Homosexual. And Renato, it opens. Uh, <laughs> we are still to find. <laughs> so Carlos and 
Khnatun. These are the names. Yeah. So where did this begin? So this began where all the love stories uh, began in 2007. Tinder? No, Facebook, of course. Oh, yeah. I thought it was i5. Do you remember i5? Two teams died since then. (laughs) Carlos Castro and Facebook. Oh, my God. Ah! (laughs) So they met on Facebook and... um, Renato was a model to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Carlos wanted to help him, right? Yes, Carlos was very influent in the Portuguese society. He was a famous colonist and would talk shit about a lot of people. For example, Perez Hilton. That's the best comparison that I can have. I think it's a fair comparison, a a small scale. (laughs) Yeah, but if I remember correctly, didn't he uh, went to a competition? Renato. Renato, he did. Face uh, models, right? Modeling, uh, yes, a modeling contest. Can, you, you guys can imagine America's Next Top Model, but in Portuguese version is like a, a, a low budget version of America's Next Top Model. And I wanted to be on that show. I saw Renato there and I wanted to be in that show. I wanted to be there, but I'm not tall. Maybe <laughs> when you remember this story, you think that it was the best decision that you not uh, you did not uh, participate. <laughs> so they meet, and uh, Carlos promised to help Renato in his career. Yes, he was a, re- a really powerful man, and he was offering to help him with his modeling career. If you are from a small town and you have this opportunity to probably. Um, have some fame. I can see how this was tempting to someone. Yes. So maybe that's why he said yes. You would just have to help. But here's the thing, guys. So the help came with a cost. <laughs> so <laughs> Carlos was not trying to be super helpful. Yeah. He did want something in exchange. Yeah, they m- met each other in the capital, which is Lisbon, and they had a lot of vacations together. So do you guys understand what's going on here? They were meeting to have sex. That's Basically, the uh, they started a relationship, right? Yes. So 21 years old and 65, 65 years old. I like to recall some things. Yeah. So we, we are in check. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Renato starts appearing uh, at home with some gifts mm-hmm. and some things that he brings. Yeah, from his modeling jobs or maybe the money that uh, Carlos was giving and helping. Maybe. Yeah, he starts receiving some money in his bank account too that he justifies with uh, some pictures that he took on, on, the, on those jobs. Carlos were... <laughs> Carlos was starting to fell in love with Renato. Yes, I think at one point he told that uh, he met his soulmates. Yeah, on a drag show? Yes, on a drag show. Yes, oh my God. Yes, and I don't... in front of all the community. Yeah, I don't, I don't think Renato liked that. He didn't. Yeah. I think that was a problem. Carlos promised that one day he would bring Renato to New York. Carlos used to go there, so it was a normal thing, I guess. Yes, but let's talk a little bit about Carlos, our victim. He was someone that was always telling his friends that one day he would be murdered. That's so creepy. That's really you are, creepy. You are entering like the dark world now. Yeah. Like the dark but, web, but I the mean, dark world. <laughs> it was his biggest fear. He had some suicidal thoughts because he didn't want to get old also. Okay, I don't want to get old too, but I, I, I will not kill myself because of that. I know, but uh, also... It's strange. I know it is strange, <laughs> but again, he was a colonist. Okay. It was his job. His job was to talk shit about other people. He had a lot of enemies and was aggressive in arguments and would probably threaten using his power. In fact, guys, some friends told that uh, Carlos, right in the, the group... Uh, group chat? Yes, that um, this was his last birthday. Oh, yeah! Yes. Oh, what the hell? What the fuck? Yeah, what the fuck? So... He's afraid of getting murdered, <laughs> but he wants to commit suicide because he does not want to get old. He writes that this is the last birthday and he says that he wants his ashes in New York City. 
Oh boy. Could he be kind I'm of a psychic or something? I'm getting the chills. I don't know. Because this is really... This is very weird. Yeah, it is. So, it is. So weird. Do you believe that he is so naive that he believes that they are in love and that he met his soulmates? Did you buy that story? I'm not saying that it can't happen, but it can. But I... Uh, he, he Renato has was five years old. But Renato was not there for that. Yes, but if you have 65 years old, can't you Having read that the other, pers the, the other person is not in love with you? Maybe you are 65 and you have... A 21 year old. I mean, yes, a he model, would pr a model with, you, okay. with me. And, I can see that. <laughs> and uh, let me like showcase my boyfriend that it's 40 years younger than me. Okay, like a trophy. Like a trophy, which you wrote that. Okay. Yes, like I, like a trophy man, a trophy husband, yes. a trophy hubby. A trophy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There were different power dynamics here. Uh, Carlos had a lot of power. Renato was looking for a new start on his career. Oh, and I do believe that Castro uh, manipulated Renato with a lot of uh, luxury gifts and a lot of promises. And he would, again, would uh, expose him and showcase him as a trophy hubby. And then Renato was seen as a gold digger. I remember uh, this because we were alive, of course. <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> they were talked in the media long before the, yeah. the, this happened. So mm -hmm. they start getting a lot of media attention. I remember this. Yes. And you, you had two, two groups. Uh, one that thought that uh, Carlos was an abuser. And one that thought that uh, Renato was a gold digger. What do you think? Or should we answer this later? No, I could give my opinion at the time. I think that both are true. They both want something from each other. They were using each other. Uh, okay, yeah, I can see that. I could... <laughs> that was really creepy. <laughs> <laughs> so where are we now? So now Carlos does his promise and brings Renato to New York City mm. to spend the New Year's Eve. Oh man, that would be trip. so in Times Square. That would yes. be really cool. They went everywhere. I mean, that's not my top five countries and places that I want to go, to be Mine honest. Either, but I mean, but, uh, I mean, taking a photo if there. If you took me to Madison Square in New Year's Eve, I would be very happy. Oh, if I had the money, that could happen. <laughs> let's see, let's see. Maybe I'll write us on I iTunes. Will wait, so. I will wait until you have 65. Oh, you, you bitch. <laughs> so we are in New York. But say, say what you're saying. Rate us, guys, so you can take me to New York City, please. <laughs> so they did a lot of sightseeing, a lot of photos. And Carlos bought Renato a Versace suit mm. uh, for him to wear in a special occasion. Oh, a great occasion that would be. So they, after a few days in New York, they met with uh, some friends from Carlos. Yes. Uh, Vanda, a longtime friend. Yeah. And her boyfriend. And they spent some days together. Yeah, Renato said that Carlos was the best thing that ever happened to him. Okay. <laughs> It's kind of strange that yeah. you treat the best 21. thing that happened to you. 21. Yes. I think the emotions are... We're speaking there. louder. The emotions are the Versace with suits. 21, with 21... You I, are 21, you are in New York, and some offer, someone offers you a Versace suit. If someone so. gift me a coffee at 21, oh, the best thing that ever happened to me. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I was in college. I remember picking up a 20 euros, a 20 euros note and like... Yeah, 50, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's the best day of my life. With, the best day ever. Ever with 10 euros that I found in the streets. But things start going not so perfect yeah because uh carlos and uh, his friends talked a lot and had a lot of side jokes i think renato started to um, feel a little bit frustrated and left sick. out maybe yeah 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 uh with these conversations he kind of heard paid to have sex It, this was kind of something that bothered him i think that escalated very fast but i think that was a trigger no doubt by this time uh, renato starts calling his family and saying yeah. that he's starting to feel uh, disgusted by this lifestyle yeah. he and wants to go back to all portugal the luxury and uh, the things and he wants to go back to portugal yeah this is not a life for him and he wants to go back to his roots i think 
this is where he started to see the poor consequences of his the choices. Yes, of his choice, basically. Yes. He is feeling trapped, he wants to go, but it doesn't go. Yeah, I think Renato, after this, was spending a lot of his days away from Carlos, I believe. Why, why do you think that... Uh, what was the reason for him just not to leave? Because Carlos was giving him money all the time. And maybe he didn't want to burn some bridges. Don't forget that Carlos was... he was... afraid? Maybe because Carlos uh, would probably scrutinize his person on on the media. He would probably I I do think, that. I think one friend from Carlos gave uh, an interview. Flavio? No, another one. Okay. Giving, gave an, another one. Another one. <laughs> That's from what? Another one. DJ, DJ Khaled! <laughs> so I think one friend from Carlos said that... Don't compare... Oh, what? Don't copyright us. Don't copyright us. <laughs> yes, please don't block us. They told that Carlos... They told that Carlos was, uh, had a bad temper and could say things to Renato like If you go to Portugal, I'll tell you... Oh, you won't have a job or something yes, like that. Yes, and I'll tell you what we did. He or, would threaten or him. something. I do believe that, that this happened. They argued you a lot. <coughs> I do believe that Renato was spending a lot of days away. A majority of the time of the day he was spending away. I didn't spend a lot of time focusing on this part, but I do believe that he was doing some things, going to the gym or having some fun and drinking some alcohol and probably being with some girls. Yes, I believe he was meeting some girls and one day Carlos was looking for him and couldn't find him and he found out that he was go he went to see some girls. Mm. At least this is what he told to to his friend Vanda. 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 To his friend Vanda. <laughs> so they argue after this uh, sí. Carlos went and picked Renato up. And they argue a lot about this. Mm. And I believe that Renato said in the car, they went to dinner with Wanda and her boyfriend. And in the car, Carl said that thing. Did you like the unwrapped chocolate, chocolate. that I left for you in the <laughs> hotel room? What the hell was that? What the fuck? Did you eat the chocolate? Is it a, a, a different know. thing? Why would you leave me, leave me a, a chocolate unwrapped? Unwrapped? What the fuck? What the f with love. Do, what, what, don't you do that. What? It's like a, a little... <laughs> no, 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 no. It's like Give a piece of chocolate. chocolate. Get with the a chocolate with... wrapped, why would you? No, it's chocolate like a chocolate, chocolate bar with I don't know a, a bite. Oh, great! Yes. Nice. I think this is kind of a code uh, like message, poop? like poop in a wrap. Maybe poop in the toilet, like you didn't flush. I left a present for I you. I left a present. For we you. say that. I say, say that. that yes. Oh, I just did a present. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever this was, Wanda told that in that uh, night at dinner, Renato was very happy. Yeah. All he wanted to do is um, celebrate something. Wasn't he a little bit tipsy or something? A lot of, a lot. A lot, he, okay. He drank a lot. Yeah. And on the other side, Carlos was very closed. He was very sad and not behaving his usual. Because so of the arguments. The chocolate, of course. The chocolate <laughs> was something important. I don't know what that was. I want to know. I don't want to know how this crime happened. I want to know what the fuck is the unwrapped chocolate. I'm so fucked up. What the fuck the is The way this? you said the chocolate. The chocolate. The chocolate. <laughs> Why was the chocolate unwrapped? Oh my God, editing this episode. Will Call be... the police. <laughs> Oh my god. So things started to get a little bit uncomfortable between them. They argue a lot and Renato said and Renato and Renato said that he was not gay anymore. Renato it opens. I'm not gay anymore. Renato it opens. I'm not gay anymore. I'm like, okay. This is this this doesn't make any sense. Do you believe he was gay at any no. time? No. I think he took this opportunity. He was from a small town. He didn't have a lot of opportunities, and he saw this as a window of opportunity to be able to grow as a model and on his career to be to have money and everything. Everything. I do think that this is what happened here and he was starting to, to suffer with that. Drinking alcohol and be drunk in every single moment. He didn't want to feel that. He probably didn't want to have sex with Carlos. I believe that the, that is the case. But he was probably having sex and, and thinking, what am I doing? So he's not gay anymore. Maybe things went to some deep. 
Yeah, uh, I believe that. Some dip. Some dip. Yeah, um, yeah. But but I think in the one of those arguments that they have, Renato said that he wanted to go back to Portugal. Never happened. They never left. Spoiler alert. They never left. Okay, guys? They never did. Alert, alert, alert. They Woo! never put one foot in Portugal. Ever again. Day. Let's go to the day of the crime. The day of the crime. Carlos was in his room with a rope and the main, the main, the maid, <laughs> the maid. And the maid entered the room. Uh, she asked, are you okay? And yes, I'm okay. Minutes after Renato entered the room, he came back for, from something. He seemed a little bit... Different. The maid left, by the way. By the way, we have to say that this is all um, from the confessions. Yes. Of Renato. Yes. This is how we, we know this because we were we are not. Yeah, and they are in their hotel. Traveling flies. Yes, they are in their hotel. I don't remember the name of the uh, hotel. Time traveling. It was a five star hotel. Yeah, of course it was. Because Portuguese are fancy. <laughs> I don't know about that, <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. So they start arguing again. <laughs> And, Over something. Yeah, I, and Carlos calls Renato's mom. About and, chocolate. Yet, <laughs> I don't think I it was about chocolate. Please tell me why it is <laughs> chocolate. The mother answered the phone and Renato said that he couldn't talk. He told Carlos to turn off the phone. He didn't yeah. want to spoke with his mother. I do believe they, um, that Carlos called uh, his mother again and his mother, his, Renato's mother, uh, heard that... Uh, something about, I don't want to talk to my mother about this. Do you believe that uh, Carlos was calling uh, some people just to calm down Renato? Maybe he was feeling angry or they were arguing a little bit more violent. So he tries to call Renato's mother to mm, calm him down. Maybe, maybe. maybe Carlos was afraid. I don't know how Renato was in this argument. I, I see two points of view here. It can be that Carlos was afraid and it can also be that Carlos was, was that type of person that uh, I need someone to hear this. He was telling something. Like he was blackmailing Renato or something. Maybe. Like I will call your mother I and have... tell you this. Yes. <gasps> Maybe. I will tell the truth. That you are not working as a model. <gasps> that I'm paying for everything and we are doing things. Maybe. Would, would that be bad? I don't know. I don't know what uh, Renato's mother knew. Don't forget that he was bringing uh, some photos, fake photos yeah, to justify true, true, the true. money and the presents. Did the mother knew I about their know. relationship? I don't know. Ah. But I don't care. I just want to know about the chocolate. But Carlos tries to call someone else. Again. And Renato tries to take the phone out of his hand. And what did happen? So Carlos slaps. Renato. Basically, Renato starts this crime by grabbing Carlos by the neck and throws him to the ground, breaking Carlos' arms. You broke my <laughs> arm. <laughs> so these were the last words of Carlos Castro. I don't oh. know if this is bad, but it's like, you broke my arm. Fuck. And heart. After this, Carlos was in the ground and Renato grabs a monitor and hits Carlos in the head and chest. After this, grabs a metal chair and does the same fucking thing. <laughs> and then a bottle of wine and then he throws to Carlos' head. Please stop. <laughs> <laughs> you are throwing everything in the room. There's more. The body. No. But, but there's more. He jumps on his face many times. Why? Why? How do you it's jump in someone? Trampoline. How do you jump in someone's know. face? I would be, I would be cautious about my ankle. It's not a, a plain surface. And by the way, Carlos was alive. Yes, Carlos was alive. So Renato throw everything that was in the room into Carlos' face. But, guys, this is just, just the beginning. I know you are shocked, you are uh, upset, but this is only the beginning. Now Renato starts imagining Carlos getting up. <laughs> And ask him to do anal. Yeah. Anal, by anal, I mean to fuck his ass. So, son, after all you did, not even an elephant would get up. You can't <laughs> prevent the gay virus, which I wrote. 
the gay various because I'm dyslexic. Renato was afraid to be fucked in the ass because he would get the gay virus. What the fuck? And Jonas wrote the gay various. Yeah. <laughs> because it was various gays. <laughs> After this, he jumps again on his face. Again. Again, with his new shoes. I mean, he changed his shoes. And jumped on his face. I, I, I don't understand the logic. There was a lot of blood there. <laughs> There's a lot of emotion on this episode. Of course there is. I, I, when I was listening to this, I would start grabbing my things and put, put clothes to me because I was afraid that someone was going to grab the things that I was holding and throw somewhere. Like Renato takes oh, his clothes off, grabs oh. a bottle opener, cuts his lips, cuts one of his ears, and the testicles, the ball sack. Oh, God. Not the testicles, the ball sack. Oh, I felt disgusted. Then a corpse without face. It, that's what is disgusting you? <laughs> Lips to be cut after all the jumping? I don't know if that, that it's still there. <laughs> I'm not sure. I don't, uh, maybe oh he, my God. Or maybe he doesn't know how to jump. <laughs> like the sack. <laughs> yeah, but then he grabbed the, the testicles and takes off from Carlos bodies with his bare hands. The voices in his head tells him to cut his wrists and to be able to be saved. Puts the testicles on his wrists to absorb the power of men. Oh. I don't know, I don't know if it is the power of men. I just say like the power of testosterone because he was afraid of being gay probably. And to be saved. The voice told him that to be saved. There was no voice. <laughs> You want to know what he did next? Guys, we will tell you. I don't know what, what is the worst part. I believe that throwing things uh, to his face, it's like... You had to be pretty, pretty angry to, to throw, throw shit against someone's face. This is a hate crime and a passionate crime. I mean, if you have a lot of mutilated parts on your he body... Was furious. And some sexual things too. Like, why would you mutilate the, that part? Because he was... He was disgusted with that. Yes! He felt rage about that. He was that. disgusted about his uh, lips also. He had to kiss those yes. lips, you know? So... Yeah, uh, I didn't think about that. Yeah, yeah. The it's lips and the, and the ear. Maybe, maybe, maybe some... I'm not uh, sure. Some kinky thing about the Stop ears. Stop listening to your friend. I don't no, know. No, maybe he asked Renato to lick his ears a lot. Okay, let's thing. move on. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> this is great. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Sorry, sorry. So Renato puts a cover on Castro's body like... It never happened, so he never existed. Mm -hmm. He takes a big bath. Let me just cover this mess up. Yeah, uh, then he takes a big and long bath, puts the brand new Versace suit given by Castro and leaves the hotel. The special suit. This for a special occasion. Here it is in the corridor. Can you imagine, like, I'm sorry for interrupting you. Can you imagine buying someone a special suit and that person wears that special suit after killing you? It's like... Uh. <laughs> kind of a, a, a ironic. What do you, you think? It's, it's like... like hey, yeah. okay. <laughs> In the corridor, he found uh, Renato's friend Wanda, right? Yes. And what did he say? He, um, so he put the sign saying do not disturb in the mm. room because the body was never going to be found that oh, way. Yeah, I forgot. Like, you are so dumb. Like, oh yeah, I <laughs> forgot. I forgot about that. <laughs> you are so dumb. Do you think this crime was premeditated? No, I, I think he thought about that a lot. Mm. I, think, I think he thought what he would do. I think he dreamed about this. Mm. It's kind of uh, dark, but I believe that... He was so disgusted and so um, mad about mm. all of this that he thought about this. I don't think that he planned, mm -hmm. but once things start to happen, he did. It, he know exactly what to do. If I'm being, um, did he? I did he I know what to do? I believe. No. I'm gonna throw everything in my room so that he can die and then put a cover because nobody will find him. Did he know what to do? Are you sure about that? I'm not, I'm not saying that it. part. I'm saying the part about the, the, the ball sack and the lips. I believe that he imagined that those things. Oh, yes. Okay. So after, uh, after putting the sign in the, in the room, um, Renato has the luck, or not, of course, of crossing with Vada, Carlos' friend, 
And I, says, I believe that Carlos said something to Wanda so that oh, they would meet. They tr yes, mm. he tries to call her. Mm. She was the last attempt to call. Mm, yeah. Maybe he was coming to, to see how, how things were. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And Renato looks at her and says, Carlos is never, never leaving, leaving this the room. To tell. Great. It was great. Great. <laughs> he grabs a cab and goes to the hospital. Yes, he, he has to go to the, the best hospital. Right? The best? A, gr a good hospital or something like that. Yeah. Good, best, wherever. He's, he's full of money. Oh, yeah. Oh, because he grabs <laughs> yes. 1000 and. Six hundred dollars from <laughs> Carlos' bag, and he's wearing Versace, bitch. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, and this is the place where Renato confesses his crimes, and yeah, he and... says this creepy thing mm. uh, when he confesses. He says that I made the world a better place. I think he got the fame that he wanted. By the way, guys, those who are uh, hoping that this is not true and that what we are saying didn't happen, uh, the autopsy that they did on the body proves that everything that Renato said was true. Did happen. Yeah. So the face was smashed. Oh my the God. ball sack was cut. Oh my God. There was no ear and the lips were cut too. During his stay in the hospital, what happened? So Renato starts, uh, he was crazy, we know that. Uh, or, Is or he? he was pretending to yeah. be crazy, I don't know. Mm. Uh, he did a lot of things, he was asking the nurse to sleep with him. He wanted uh, the nurses to call him a kabaka, a kabako, yeah. or something like so, that. Yeah. And he was doing push-ups. And uh, he wears a, wore a Superman cape. A Superman cape, yes, yeah, he was a superhero. It? This is where uh, Renato confesses to his psychologist that he, was, he had suffered from some molesting. When he was younger, by, uh, by his cousins? Uh, no, no, no. He had something oh. that is about the sexual orientation. So okay, okay. he told her that he preferred women, but he had some things with his cousins. Cousins, okay. Nice way to <laughs> talk about your cousins on global media. <laughs> like, thanks a lot. <laughs> yes. I mean, so they were trying to defend Renato by saying that he had bipolar disorder. This was the defense. It can be possible. I'm not saying that it, it wasn't, but I do believe the slap on uh, Renato's face was the trigger for this to happen. I believe that all of this was unleashed by that slap. It was like the, the final blow. It's the final countdown. countdown. We're going to be so copyrighted on this episode. <laughs> Do you believe that this had this was motivated by sexual orientation? Maybe some revolt about all of that, uh, about fame. Maybe he did not uh, achieve what he was hoping. The modeling industry is really harsh. I do believe that Renato tried before and wasn't able to get a career on that. He tried model uh, face models of the year and also came in third place. And I don't know how many jobs he got from that. So He had a contract b b before meeting um, Carlos. Castro. Renato was admiring the, um, all the possibilities that could happen by being with Carlos. I think he saw a shortcut there and wanted to try. And then he saw the things that he had to do to satisfy Carlos so that he could get those things and he wasn't okay with that. I agree with you. I, I believe that he he thought at first, like, I can do this. Mm -hmm. I can stall this, this Guys, don't, don't guy. Guys, yeah, don't ever do this. Yes. You can do this. Yes. You can own. do anything you want by yourselves. When the time comes and you look back, your, you will fill your heart with fulfillment and not by others. Yes. So... Uh, and you will not depend on anyone or yeah. share your successes with uh, with anyone or feel that you depend on someone. So two years later, yes. Renato is still in, in uh, the States and the trial happens, finally. The jury took six hours for a verdict. By the way, the, the legal system in uh, the States are, is very different from Portugal. Here yes. we have one judge that decides the, yeah. 
Don't we have a jury? No, we have one judge. Oh, great. <laughs> I believe that the, this is what happens. Yes. Here. I believe they can do that, but it's not the, um, the usual. So, Six hours yeah. for 12 people to be in agreement of what happened. Yeah, and he was considered guilty. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, and he confessed. So Yeah, so he's spending 25 years in, in jail. In jail. When you, you told me this before, when is he, he leaving in 13 uh, years? 2035. Not sure, but in 13 that. years. He, he, would, he will have 46. Oh, he can still have something. Yes, he can have kids, he can have a wife, he can have everything. Kind of scary, but okay. For me, the most uh, heartbreaking uh, stuff happened here because uh, Renato's mother was there. She did everything in her power to help her kid. She sold a lot the of house. her that their house, yeah. And, and don't forget that he was two years until he could get a two the trial. Year, yeah, two years in another country. Two years wow. without because they were trying to to prove that he was not uh, that he had bipolar disorder. So yeah, that was a chance that he could be saved. Uh, by this. Th this is so so sad for uh, his family that had to go through this by uh, his ch choices because it was and she had to sell her house. It's like, Everything. damn it! They did uh, a petition to, to ask uh, Renato to come to Portugal. At least he could uh, do his sentence here. Yeah, but no. Nah. Nah. Still there. Nah. Where he is he staying? He's staying in a high security jail. In a high security with jail. With the worst uh, killer. The worst criminals. Criminals like, ever. Thousand, uh, yeah, thousand yeah. of the worst criminals in Oof. the States. I'm scared for and, the day that he's leaving. And you are 21. You are a kid. Imagine what he went through in jail. It so, was not good. I don't know how he will come out of there. He will, and he will come to Portugal, and maybe he can uh, clarify maybe, us yeah, about the chocolate, please. Oh my god! <laughs> But just sharing some information. William Barr, which was the psychologist of the um, the the, um, the trial, the, the prosecutor. prosecutor. <laughs> yes, he was hired uh, many, 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 many times. He earned a lot of money. Uh, and his opinion was that uh, Renato didn't suffer from anything. I think everything happened and it was real. And there was nothing there that he could fake. The only uh, time he faked something was at the hospital, I believe. Uh, like, I'm, not, I'm not a psychologist, but haven't you ever felt rage? True rage. To no. kill someone? No. No, of course not. Of course. <laughs> I believe that. Uh... If I don't like someone, I leave. I don't want to live in a world Are where, you siding where... with him? No, I'm not. <laughs> But I, I cannot live in a world where people wake up and kill someone. Oh, I, I have to justify that. You're so... in for a treat. <laughs> You're gonna meet so many you of them. You will show me something. Yeah. Oh my God, yes. Uh... There are also some crazy Portuguese uh, I will not murderers. Sleep after this, like for two weeks or something. But it didn't happen here. But it can, and there are a lot of crimes that happen here. And if you guys really liked uh, some Portuguese crimes, we can talk about it. Don't forget about Madeline yeah, McCann. We have some pearls here. Yeah, we do have. Yeah. Don't forget to follow us here on Spotify. Yes, rate us, guys. On iTunes, give us five stars if you really enjoy it, please, because it will really help us. Follow us on YouTube, follow us on Instagram, on every single platform of Spilling the Crime. Don't forget, if you have a, a spooky story or a crime story, send us an email to spillingthecrime at gmail.com are we talking in the next episode do you have any idea um, you want to un unravel something should we talk about night stalker maybe the night stalker yes it's a crime that i don't I know. know that story i know and it's he's really creepy looking uh, will yeah. i sleep ever did you come not yet bye guys <laughs>
Don't third. say it's a third. A third, it's a, a it's turtle. a poop. Oh, it's a poop. Oh, everything it's a poop in this show. A third, a third, a kagadao. Okay, it's a kagadao.